Ontario's Information and Privacy Commissioner has issued a final dismissal in a case involving lurid allegations that a Toronto police officer urinated on Joe Bickram in a 52 division cell in January 2009. There's no justice in this case, as there was no justice in other cases. I'm Doug Johnson Hatlam. In January 2012, Joe approached me with piles of folded and tattered paperwork from three years worth of his own efforts to try and get a hold of video from his time in the cell. The commissioner's ruling confirms that, as the result of an unreasonable search conducted by police in 2012, Toronto police officers falsely swore to Mr. Bickram and to the commissioner's office that video from the cell no longer existed when it did, in fact, exist. Assistant Commissioner Brian Beamish, however, flatly refused to provide any remedy for Toronto police perjury. Mr. Beamish further held that he is satisfied that police have now turned over all audio and video in the matter and that they can simply be trusted to speak truthfully in the future. Mr. Bickram and I are posting online the entire hour and a half of video that has been made available from Mr. Bickram's more than three hours in custody. Deputy Toronto Police Chief Mike Federico explained that gaps in the video can be explained by the fact that the footage quote, captures 30 seconds of cessation of movement prior to each gap or stoppage and then starts again on any detected movement, end quote. The Panasonic recording equipment is keyed to such a level of sensitivity, according to Federico, that a mere change in shadows can trigger recording. Specific footage received by Mr. Bikram confirms that level of sensitivity. At 1943.01, the recording quits due to inactivity. At 1950-53, the recording resumes immediately when a light is turned on in the hallway. Nevertheless, Toronto Police, the Commissioner, and an independent technical expert hired by the Commissioner have offered Mr. Bickram no explanation whatsoever as to why both cameras' motion sensors did not resume recording during a critical six-minute gap in which Mr. Bickram's body position changed. We have looped and highlighted the frames which begin and end that six-minute gap to demonstrate that Mr. Bikram's right leg moved during the time gap in a way that ought to have triggered recording. At 1857.35, both cameras stopped recording. This is the very last frame available from camera angle one. In the very first frame available, more than six minutes later at 1903.50, Mr. Bikram's leg has moved. Toggling between the two frames shows this movement unmistakably. The Commissioner and Toronto Police have not disputed evidence offered that Mr. Bikram moved and that his movement should have triggered the camera's recording capabilities. Instead, Mr. Beamish's final letter relies on portions of a report by tech expert Chuck Rothman of Wartsman's. Mr. Rothman, after an otherwise thorough investigation, fails to address why Mr. Bikram's movement did not trigger recording. Mr. Rothman concludes that an average IT technician would not have the knowledge or expertise required to tamper with the original video files, and that a high-level technical expert in reverse engineering video software would need to dedicate many hours or days before being able to edit the raw data. Mr. Rothman and Mr. Beamish ignore the technological sophistication afforded to Toronto Police by its annual billion-dollar budget. Toronto Police did not withhold the raw video for hours or days, as suggested by Mr. Rothman. It ignored requests, lied, and perjured itself for over six years before it finally handed over the raw files. There remains an unexplained cessation of video recording during which time Mr. Bikram moved. This is undisputed. Finally, Mr. Rothman has established that a high-level technical expert with sufficient time might be able to tamper with the files. Joe reacted to the release of the ruling with justifiable disappointment. I'm angry, I am upset, and I'm mad. He says the commissioner has proven to be as dirty, filthy, as the police are. Further appeal will be almost impossible for Mr. Bikram, as he is ill and lacks the financial resources necessary to mount a fight in a divisional court that generally costs tens of thousands of dollars. A fair and just society would not require a man who is poor, dark-skinned, and confined to a wheelchair to fight himself for the truth to come out about wrongs he suffered at the hands of the most powerful public body in Toronto.